Hello everyone and welcome back to the FRC Historian. Today I'll be going over some 2019 FRC strategies per viewer request. Now before I say this, I'd like to say I'm going over the ones that I noticed throughout the season and then researching for this, so if I'm missing any, please let me know down in the comments below, or if you like any of these, please let me know as well. And I'd love to hear down in the comments below. Now first off, we're going to start with the uh, Null Hatch strategy. So throughout this season, starting out in the beginning, you had many alliances who would go for all six null hatches, for instance, in the 1st of Michigan, Kettering District, the Festival de Robotique, Montreal Regional, and then the Haymarket, Chesapeake District, where you had many alliances go for all six, and then they would spend the rest of, the rest of Taliaberade mode going for cargo inside of the ship, or maybe even a cargo and autonomous. This would work out as for most of, most of week one, you wouldn't have any points or ceilings reaching out over 100 points, and thus the need for null hatches was much higher, as it would be much more convenient for your alliance to score cargo wall match, and then maybe put on a few rocket hatches, They have to put hatches onto every single cargo ship and then score, although that would give you two points more, it would take a lot more time, and the other alliance would already be going for that, would already be going for the null hatch bonuses. Now, there were some exceptions to this, that being in the Haymarket District, the finalist alliance did put on five, where they would attempt to put one hatch on an autonomous, which would give them the extra two points, however, it wasn't enough to win in the district, However, there was one unique one that I saw, that being the a regional in Ohio, the Miami Valley Regional, where both alliances in the finals, three, 302 alliance and the 4028 alliance, each of them had zero null hatches. So what would happen here is they would start off with time as trying to put a hatch onto the side, and then the rest of the match would be, would be consistent of them putting on hatches on the side and then cargo. Although this would give you two points per hatch, it wasn't as efficient as, like I mentioned, this was week one. The strategy, match strategy was still developing, and the ha scores weren't as high as other places, however they didn't have any, which was a development of its own. Now the smartest idea I've ever seen of this was in the 2019 Turing Division in Houston, where you have the alliance of 254 and 3310, where each of them would attempt to get two hatches on an autonomous, having two null hatches so they would try to get two each, so by the end of autonomous they would have all six hatches on, all cargo scored, but having scored four. Although this didn't work perfectly every time, they were able to put up the world high score here, and I feel like this was the smartest use of it. Another smart use of this was in the first in Michigan District Championship, where an alliance was able to put on a hatch on a zone, and then pick up a cargo from the start of the match to score it somewhere else, say somewhere else in a null hatch. However, there are many different uses of this, and I feel like as it came on, you start feeling that there was a balance between what you needed between null hatches, and then hatches score and autonomous. However, I will tell you that as the season developed, there was more than just scoring cargo came into this decision. So now we're going to move on to the second part of this, that being the interconnection between all of these different strategies. Let's look at defense, which was very important this year, and saying that defense was only a little bit important would be the understatement of 2019, as defense was, although it was limited to one bot, it was incredibly necessary. Now there are three ways you could use your second bot, one being you can have your second alliance partner be one that scores hatches and cargo. You can have them play defense. Or the most unique one of all, I saw at one district, that being the 1st in Michigan Kettering District, 1st in Michigan East Kentwood District, where you had the second alliance use the second bot to play defense against the other alliance defense bot. So in uh, cleaner words, that would mean they would use their alliance partner to take the other alliance's predetermined defense bot and stop them from stopping their own alliance partners thus giving their two alliance partners the highest point ceiling that they could possibly get. This would be effective in many cases, as say that you have an alliance partner who isn't the best at taking on defense, then you could easily stop that, mitigate that threat immediately where you wouldn't be stopping the other alliance from scoring, however, you would be able to achieve your own alliance's point ceiling. Now on top of this, there were two alliances, both at Worlds, of course they were different Worlds, that fully utilize the idea of uh, defense mitigation, that being the Galileo number one alliance and then the Curie number one alliance. Now for Galileo, this was the alliance of teams 971 and 179, what I call the palindrome alliance, where them alongside 498 would take care of their division and then some matches of Einstein where they would win, where they would win their own matches by 971 taking on a rocket, 179 taking on a rocket, and then 498 playing defense, where if another defense bot were to go up to either 179 or 971 and try and stop them from scoring, the other alliance partner would score 
whereas the one being defended upon would try their hardest. Now 498 also played a massive role in this where they would play defense against the other alliance, that being that if only one robot was able to score, it would only be one robot on both sides, and the 971179 powerhouse was good enough to make it all the way to Einstein and losing one match on the way there, and then do incredibly well on the Einstein field as well, which was a very, a very great alliance that I wanted to see do incredibly well. Now the other one being the Curie Division in Detroit. Now in Detroit, the Curie Division number one alliance was one that I personally wanted to succeed, as it had the dynamic duo of 2056 and 1114. However, there was an incredibly powerful alliance of 195 and 3538, the number four alliance, who was able to take them down in the semis. Why is that? Because although they each tried their own rockets at, to take a hand at that, their own line, the number four alliance's defense bot was able to take down 1114, limiting their score so, such that they were unable to make it on to the finals and possibly Einstein Field. And the number four alliance was an incredibly powerful one, and they easily deserved their rank on the Einstein Field, being the only team to have beaten the Tesla alliance, actually, if you did not know, because they won twice, they tied twice, and they only lost to the carry division. Now, what I will say here is that the reason why the two rocket layout was incredibly important this year is because if you go for each rocket, instead of the cargo ship, it mitigates the offense, effects of defense where, say that if one alliance partner is going for the cargo ship, the other alliance partner is going for a rocket, the alliance, the defense bot could possibly take both of them down by staging them between the rocket and the cargo ship. However, if they each go for their own rocket, it'll be a lot harder for the defense bot to stop both of the teams instead of just one. Now we're going to move on to the third part, that being a little bit of the defense uh, and the end game. So one of the things I've seen from the beginning of the season was once the in-game clock started running, if a defense bot hadn't already come back to their side, the other alliance would start to take advantage of that by keeping them and blocking them into their own side, and maybe even try to get a free climb, free climbing points out of that, as if the defender was unable to climb, that would cost the alliance yearly in points. However, one of the nice things about this year that was incredibly different in my eyes was how there were no ranking point bonuses, which is something I want to come back in 2020. However, that did change a few things when it came to endgame. As for a lot of the rank week ones and the like, you saw one bot would go for level 3, one bot would go to level 2 or, or level 1, and the other alliance partner would pick one or the other. You didn't see a lot of more than one robot in level 3, and although this would change much later in the season, it was incredibly interesting to see what this would take full in. So now, what I saw originally was you saw 27, 67, and 16, 19, building what I would call Miracle Climbs, which would be climbs that would be able to get onto level 3 without taking up any space on the level 3 platform, thus allowing another robot to get on top. The aforementioned Galileo Alliance of 179 and 971. 971 was a little bit of a smaller robot, allowing both robots to get on level 3. However, 16, 19, and 16, 7, 16, 19, and 27, 67 were able to get up with another alliance partner being able to get up there fully, so you had two robots up on level three. Now, however, although this was a tremendous achievement, there are two robots of this year that I saw, of course, in the professional in the competition season, which you really have to give credit to. Those being 1678 and 5026, where you saw at the Central Valley Regional one of the most definitive end games of all time in the finals, where you had two alliances: 1678 on one, 5026 on the other. Where both robots could do pull off triple level climbs, however, only 5026 tried it in the finals matches, and it was very glorious to see both of them do that. And it was one of them, arguably the most interesting end games up until Einstein itself, where the aforementioned terrain division of 254 and 3310, along with 6986, showed asked the world what it truly meant when they were when they would say there's not enough space on level three, where all three of those robots were able to get up because of miracle climbs and the space they were able to allocate. Thus, also being an alliance, being able to get three people up there, which was incredible at that time, especially not with a buddy, especially not with a buddy climb. So now, what I think really led to this was there was no bonus in Endgame to climbing all that much, or a bonus for getting all the rockets in the in the elimination matches. What I mean by that is when we look at previous years, like get one more gear, you get that rotor, you get a hundred point bonus. To get one more KPA, you get that twenty point bonus or for the breach bonus or the capture bonus in 2016. With this year, there wasn't that bonus. So I feel like if there had been a bonus, say a 15 point bonus for getting enough people and enough points in the end game, I feel like there'd be more triple level climbs, say 50, 26 and 1678. That's why you really have to give them credit for taking that risk, knowing that they would only get 
that they would be able to get a ranking point for that, but elimination matches, especially in 5026's case, it wouldn't be worth as much because it would be able to get all three people up, but with how long it took them to climb, it really wasn't as worth it as, say, just trying to use the rest of that time to score a little bit more, which is arguably, arguably a little bit, little bit better this year. However, 5026 took a risk, and as we know, they took that risk, they became a regional finalist captain, they got a wild card, and they went on to the championship where they would win Worlds. Of course, that wasn't known at the beginning when they decided to go for a triple level climb. 1678 also went for a triple level climb, a little bit less surprising. However, they didn't use that in every match they played. They mostly used it in the qualification matches, where in the elimination matches they would instead prioritize scoring and not go for the level 3 climb. One thing I must say about 2019, though, was it was incredibly interesting with all of the different match strategy. And one thing that we have to say about this game that we can't say about many others is that we did get a championship, that being Detroit, where you didn't have any rank 1 alliances making it to Einstein. This was an incredibly interesting feat, it doesn't happen very often, if well, ever. And there were some very powerful rank 1 alliances at the Detroit Championship, to be completely honest. And much in part due to the strategies of 2019, this really did help some lower ranking alliances to make it to the Einstein field and have a very interesting Einstein at both championships. Thank you all for watching. This has been the FRC Historian. Please share this with other people if you want to get them involved or have them there about FRC. I will saw this as a success if someone learned something today about FRC. Thank you all for watching. If you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comments below.